Hi, welcome back. This is uh, part two of Talk Tuesday in September on suicide and attempted suicide and assisted suicide. So, uh, this is part two. I'm Susan B. Lahaki, running for president as a write-in. Welcome. So, um, let's see. It's the 10th leading cause of death worldwide. So that's pretty huge. There's a lot of stress, like I said in the last video. And it can come from many places. So I guess let's talk now about attempted suicide and how we can, um, well, let's talk about that. So sometimes people attempt a suicide and they're unsuccessful. And then they're left in a worse situation than they had before. I'm sure there's a lot of medical uh, expenses that comes with that. Sometimes people end up paralyzed and um, yeah, just their body has changed because of whatever they did. You know, um, they might be missing body parts. Um, yeah. that, of course, makes life more difficult. So, uh, since I'm actually pro-life and pro-mental health and pro-diversity, um, I would like people to stop trying to commit suicide and to enjoy their lives. So, uh, as I've said in the past, you know, the feeling usually only lasts about two to three, maybe five hours, and then it goes away. So turn on that music. If you don't have a car, put headphones on, listen to it loud, listen to the words, get them deep inside of you, find some motivational songs like, like uh, It's a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong or Firework by Katy Perry, or Shake It Off by Taylor Swift, or Come Sail Away With Me by Styx, or Someone Save My Life Tonight by Elton John, Hakuna Matata by Disney. There's a lot of good out there. Oh, and that's what friends are for by um, Dionne Warwick, right, I think. Um, yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of way to overcome those feelings. I recommend music if you have a car. I recommend driving and putting music on. That is, for me, one of the best therapies. And... Um, the idea is that it's all in here. So you're battling your own brain and you have to get control over it. So something I learned from uh, Tony Robbins is you have this blockage, this thing you're, you're seeing in your head and listening to, and you don't want to listen to it anymore. So you have to make it smaller and smaller and smaller. But at the same time, Replace it with an image of something good, something simple, peaceful. Whether you're sitting under an apple tree in a field somewhere, or maybe you're eating a favorite ice cream, but replace it with that. That will help a great deal. Favorite things from uh, Sound of Music is a good one. Think of your favorite things. And then sometimes I don't feel like battling the thought at all. So I just go to sleep. I just lie down. 
and go to sleep for a couple of hours and then I wake up refreshed. And sometimes it takes a day, a full 24 hours, before I real, feel really normal and right again. But that's also, you know, it depends on the person and what the situation is. Finding a solution to a problem might also help. You know, maybe it's a problem that's causing you to have these feelings. And there's always solutions. Um, one thing I personally have stopped doing is having expectations. <clears throat> I have no expectations and I don't want people to have them of me either. I think it's easiest that way. You get done what you can and what you don't get done today will get done tomorrow or the next day. You know, you have a plan and you put it in motion and you slowly get to wherever you're going. But when you add expectation to a plan, that causes tension, that causes stress, and then that causes anger and hate and resentment. And that's what you want to avoid. So put expectation out, out of the picture. You know, enjoy every moment of every day. There's something to be enjoyed in every, every moment. Um, if people are bothering you, picking on you, bullying you, try to reduce your contact with them and do what Taylor Swift says, shake it off. Because haters are going to hate, 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 hate. But you don't have to be a part of it. You can walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's my advice for um, prevention. If, however, your thoughts of suicide are including others, or if they're um, longer than five hours, then go to your doctor. Tell your doctor this and get some help. Um, so that we don't have any of these shootings anymore. And it's about being respectful to yourself, respecting your own life, <clears throat> as well as lives of others. Um, yeah. Life is long, and it's going to be full if you live long enough. Everybody has ups and downs, everyone. You will fall in love many times. So be prepared for that too. There are people who will come into your life who you will love. Not everybody's perfect. But love can also bring about... Uh, new things, new possibility in people's lives. And love helps to avoid loneliness, of course. Being in control of your own life and your own thoughts is also very important. I think uh, a lot of young girls who are anorexic, who attempt suicide that way by not eating, they feel out of control. They feel like, you know, they're not perfect. You don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. We're born imperfect. One side of us is usually bigger than the other. You know, we all have things that we're not good at. Not everyone is good at everything. So, ex you know, the joy is in our individualism, in what makes us us, in the small things that are different. That's where our self begins, you know, our specialty, who we are, what makes us up. 
Now I know that sometimes young people feel like, you know, something happened and it's the end of the world for them. But life is long, really. And there are so many things that change over your lifetime. You have, you know, childhood, then you have young adult, then you have middle age, and then you have old age. And each time of life has a specific purpose and meaning and new horizons. Now I'm going to say I'm middle-aged. I'm 54. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy. Of course, you know, 15 years ago, when my daughter was going through chemotherapy for the first time, I was not so happy. It was hard. I needed ways of escaping, for sure. My reality was not what I wanted it to be, but I also had no choice and I couldn't run away. I had to face it. So, you know, there are times where you have to take the good and there are times where you have to take the bad. And sometimes we don't have a choice in what comes. And sometimes we do. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. But sometimes it comes uninvited. So the best thing to do is to try to be as fit in your body, mind, and soul as much as possible at any one time. That's why, you know, one of the things that I really think is important, not only do we need a healthy body, but we need a healthy mind. And I think in the U.S. right now, we're not spending enough time on mental illness. So I think we still need to do a lot of work there. And we need to find uh, a way to solve that, to bring everybody to a more united understanding way of dealing with mental illness yeah. okay so i'm going to end part two here and go on to part three assisted suicide